Welcome back to Head First Programming Teasers. In this installment, we're going to jump into a foundational topic for learning JavaScript, and that is the topic of variables and types. Now, as you saw in the previous teasers installment, a lot of JavaScript code begins with a set of variable declarations, and those are the variables that are typically used throughout the rest of the code. You don't have to do this in JavaScript. You can actually put variable declarations in a lot of different places, but most often we put our variables all right at the top of our code. And that's just a good practice so that you know what variables you're using in your code and so that when other people look at your code, they'll know what variables you're using too. It's a lot easier for other people to look at your code and know what you mean if you organize your code well and put your variables up at the top. So let's talk about what a variable is. A variable is just a name that you put on a little bit of storage. Think of that storage like a cup, a cup that's going to hold something. To store something in a variable, we take a value and we put it in the cup. That value could be a number or it could be a string of characters, what we just usually call a string. And once we have a variable, we can then refer to that variable in our code. We can test its value, we can change its value, and we can use the value to compute new values and even more. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Let's say we want to create a variable and that variable is going to be called name. And we're going to give that variable a value like the string Fido. And we can create another variable. Let's call that variable age and we'll give it a number like the number four. So if you think about this using our cup analogy, it looks a little like this. We have a cup that's called name and it's got a string Fido inside of it. And we've got a cup that's called age and it's got the number four inside of it. Now, one thing that we should pay attention to here is that we have two variables and they're each holding different kinds of values, different types of values. And those types are a number and a string. Why is that interesting to point out? Well, the types that variables hold turns out to be very important in the way that we use these variables in our code, as we'll see. So it's important to note the kinds of types that we can use for the different values that we put into variables. So far, we've seen a string and a number, and with the number type, not only can we store a number like four, which is an integer, we can also store floating point numbers. For instance, we might want to store the value 4.5 or even 4.125 in a variable age. We can easily do that in JavaScript. And to JavaScript, you don't usually have to think of 4 and 4.5 or 4.125 as different types. However, in many languages, 4 and 4.5 are two different types because one is an integer and one is a floating point number. And so you have to treat them differently. JavaScript is a little bit more flexible, and most of the time it just treats these both as numbers. Now, there's another way that JavaScript is flexible, and that's how it treats the type of variables. JavaScript doesn't care about the type of a variable in the sense that if I have a variable, say name, and I set its value to the string Fido, I can turn around in the next statement and reassign name to a number if I want. That means that JavaScript is what we call dynamically typed. It means that I can reassign a variable to another value, even if it's another type. Now, why is this unusual? It's because in a lot of languages, this isn't the case. In a lot of languages, when I create a variable, I'm also telling the compiler what the type of the variable is. For instance, in a language like Java, I have to declare a variable and say right up front, whether it's a string or a number, or even what kind of number it is. And then I've got to stick with that type for the variable for the rest of my code. So why would a language do it one way versus the other? Well, in a statically typed language, that is a language like Java, which is what we're looking at here, where I have to declare the type of my variables, there are some benefits. For instance, I can figure out if I've made errors in using that type when the program is compiled. So if I have a variable weight that's an integer and I assign it the value 16, if I then try to assign a string like too much to weight, 
then the Java compiler is going to complain and tell me that I can't do that. And knowing this before I run my program can lead to fewer runtime errors. Now with JavaScript, we trade that for some flexibility. Remember, JavaScript is dynamically typed, meaning that it allows us to change the types of our variables. And this flexibility is one of the reasons it's so easy for people to begin programming with JavaScript. You don't have to learn a mountain of knowledge about types before you start writing a program. So in the case of JavaScript, all we have to do is write var before our variables. We don't have to give our variables a specific type. But even though I can change a variable from a string to a number, there are some very good reasons not to change the type of your variable in the middle of a program. Once you've decided that a variable should contain a string, if you change that variable to a number halfway through your program, but then forget that you did that, you might end up with some very unexpected behavior. We'll delve into some of these issues in head-first JavaScript programming. Now, finally, we've used the types string and number so far, but JavaScript has other types too. And we usually split those types into two groups, and one we call the primitive types, and the other we call objects. So far, we've just been talking about primitive types like strings and numbers. But there are also Booleans, and the types null and undefined that all belong to the primitives group. And with objects, we have types like array and the document object, both of which are built into JavaScript, as well as objects that you create yourself. But we'll leave all that for another video and go ahead and wrap up installment five of Headfirst JavaScript Programming Teasers, and we'll see you in the next installment.